Hi guys, Sandy here. In this video today, we're gonna to go through the warm up. Now this is something that you should be doing whether you're gonna go on court, whether you're gonna do a circuit at home, whatever it might be. And it doesn't have to be a 20, 30 minute warm up. You can do four or five minutes, do the right exercises with the right technique, and you'll properly warm your body ready for sport or ready for exercise. So in this video, we're gonna go through it to time. So I'm gonna do each of the exercises, how many reps you should be doing, and go through. And so in four or five minutes time, you should be fully warm to start whatever exercise it is you're about to do. So we always start with a cardio based exercise. Now in this case skipping is great because you're kind of warming up your shoulders and your upper body as well as bouncing on your toes and warming up the lower half. If you've got a skipping rope that's great, if you haven't then you can always bounce or do jumps or star jumps, whatever whatever really is just to get your circulation going. If you've got space to jog you can kind of do a little jog round, do some side steps. Anything really just to kind of get on your toes and get bouncing and to start that circulation and raise your uh, heart rate. That's really the aim of this little cardio section so that when you go into the other exercises your body is already warm, you're already pumping blood around the system and you're ready to go. So the first stretch I normally go into is the runner's stretch here. I'm trying to keep my back leg relatively straight and I've got my front foot down fully on the ground. If that's too difficult on the ground, then you can always do it from the chair. That gives you a little bit more upright and it's a bit easier to do this stretch. If you're comfortable doing it from the ground, that's great. I normally do about 10 pulses on each side. This depends if I'm tight or not. If I'm tight, I might do a couple more. I then go into mobilizing the ankle. I've called it that, but really also it's a lot of hip and glute work here. And the aim is to do about five circles, keeping your front foot on the ground so that's not moving. Your back leg stays fairly straight and you're just trying to feel the stretch in your glute and hip. Next I'll do the hamstring stretch and that pretty much is just straightening as much as you can that front leg so you feel that stretch in the hamstring. I'll do about five on each leg here, just having a control motion and making sure I can feel that stretch in the hamstring. The next position I go into is the downward dog position. You often see this in yoga and here I'm just kind of stretching the calf out a little bit but really I'm doing some up and down. So I'll go down into almost like a kind of forward plank position and then go back up to stretch. And I'm really stretching everything here, my shoulders, my hips, hamstrings, legs, everything. And you can see that my heels are not touching the ground because I don't quite have that flexibility in the back of my legs, but still it's pretty good uh, exercise, even if that's the case. And don't worry about not quite straightening your legs or not quite touching the ground. The aim is to feel that stretch. I'll then do the ankle touches. So my right hand is touching my left ankle, my left hand is touching my right ankle. And I'll do about five of these on each side, trying to keep a good posture, both with my upper back, but also with my hips and my legs. With all of these exercises, it's about control. It's not a race. Take your time, make sure you're getting good technique and posture. If you find it difficult getting into a good downward dog position, you can do it from your knees. And here I'm getting into that same position and touching the opposite side of my knee with my hand, so I'm still getting that rotation, but from an easier start position. The last exercise in this position is the back scratch, and this is what you're doing. You're literally going back, scratching as high up as you can on your back, turning your palm to the back, and that is really working the shoulder joint. And you'll feel that when you're doing a few of these. I'll do three of these each side, just try and mobilize that shoulder. I'll then finish with some lunges. So I'll have my arms in the air and I'll lunge forward and then lunge back as one set. And I'll do that four sets on each leg. And that's just basically trying to keep my back up nice and straight. I'm landing firmly on that front leg and I'm really working all parts of my body here. I'm getting a bit of rotation involved. I'm using my legs and I'm trying to keep my nice balance and posture. You can see that I'm doing it pretty slowly and, and that's exactly what you should be doing. A nice controlled tempo, not rushing it just trying to warm up your body for exercise. So this is your warm up. You can see that it's about four to five minutes. It's not too long and you can do this before any of your sessions. Now I would say if you're going into a heavy leg session, you might want to do a little bit more legs at the end of the warm up. For example, a few body weight squats or some more lunges or something like that. Or if you're going to go into some sprints, some speed endurance, then you might want to do a few shuttles, something that 
requires a little bit more warm-up is when you're doing a slightly more intense activity. Same with the upper body. If you're going to do a difficult upper body session, you might do a little bit more stuff with the shoulders before you get into that session. And it's the same with paddle. You might do some paddle specific coordination and racket moves before you start your match. But this is a basic warm-up, four to five minutes, and you really should be doing this before all of your sessions.